Well, the, the work really started in the mid nineties, trying to trying to use evidence uh, on uh, player transfers in football to to try and develop a, a valuation method. Could we could we improve on how we valued players for for transfer purposes? And that inevitably led on to trying to, if you like, understand the value of players in terms of what they did on the pitch, and. As I analysed that player performance data, which was just beginning to emerge, and we forget that you know having the extensive data on what players are doing in football, rugby union, rugby league, is a relatively new phenomenon. So that data was just really beginning to emerge in 1999, 2000, 2001, as I started working in this area. And I was very much working in the dark, and, and on um, the people who'd shown interest in the valuation really were the, the banks and lawyers, legal cases, financing. Uh, coaches uh, and the clubs themselves hadn't shown a huge amount of interest. And then, the, in a sense, the breakthrough came with the publication of Moneyball and the story of how Billy Bean, on a very small budget in the Oakland Athletics team in Major League Baseball, had used statistics to gain a competitive advantage. And my estimates was that over a nine-year period, he, his team were operating at about 60% more efficiently than any other team, in, than the average in Major League Baseball. And they were basically using statistics, existing data, data that was available to others, but they were using data better by analysing it statistically to find players players that hadn't been valued, had been undervalued by the market so that they could get, that effectively they could buy more wins for their dollars and that's ultimately what professional sports is about, it's about taking money and transforming it into wins and Billy Bean showed that he was uh, uh, the master of that in, in Major League Baseball. And I was fortunate that the person who made contact was Billy Bean himself. Oakland had acquired a, a football club, uh, San Jose Earthquakes had competed in the, in the MLS, so they had access to the data. So I collaborated with Billy. They, they provided data on all the MLS t uh, games over a two-year period, and I, I wrote weekly reports. I, I wrote something in the order of 80 or 90 reports for, for Billy and the owners of uh, the Oakland days over a, a two-year period and that, and that was uh, wonderful being able to, to work with with uh, the leader in, in applying stats uh, in professional team sports. As I then, that, that work came to an end, the, uh, the, the football team itself didn't want to go down that way uh, and I was fortunate uh, to, to, to meet Phil Clark. Uh, Phil and I worked on applying statistical analysis to, to the major uh, factors that had impacted on all the, the tries scored in Super League in 2009. And then uh, uh, Phil introduced me through his, his ex-Wigan colleague Andy Farrell introduced me to Saracens. And, and I've been working with Saracens over the last 18 months developing their evidence-based approach to coaching. I went into an organisation that that had a philosophy very much based on a medical approach to things. That came from Brendan Ventner, their, their, their director of rugby, when I first started working with Saracens. Brendan's a GP, he's got two basic mantras. It's got to be evidence-based. How can I determine best practice if I don't look at medicine? And secondly, it's got to be people-centred. I don't treat diseases, I treat people. So it's, what I do, I'll use the evidence, but then I tailor it and make an approach uh, to, to, to treating a, an individual based on that individual. And he adopted the same approach at Saracens for rugby, evidence-based and, and very much people-centred. That's a, a, an incredibly focused organisation, but a very caring organisation. So I went into an organisation that already used evidence to inform their, their decisions. And, and what I've done working with the coaches is develop their uh, ability to, to take the data that they create by, from their expert analysis of, of the game videos take that data and turn it into evidence that informs coaching decisions. It helps inform tactical decisions on the game plan. It helps inform team selection. Importantly, it helps inform training priorities. Uh, the start, uh, we look at the stats for a game when, when there are uh, key statistics that are in what we would call the red zone, that they're at uh, a, a relatively poor level. That can, uh, that's often then determines what the training priorities will be that week. And we've seen perhaps some tangible success with their victory in the Aviva Premiership last season. Um, obviously no small feat by any club. You believe that this system you've developed with them now is something that is 
of increasing importance to, to all sports teams potentially? Yeah, I do. I think uh, you know nothing persuades like success. And, and the key thing I've found in a number of the most successful sports teams is their attitude to losing. That successful sports teams treat losing as an incredible learning opportunity. And Saracens had a very poor uh, run in the Heineken Cup against top-class European competition. At the end, when they were knocked out of that tournament in January, they, they analysed that in great detail. They learnt from it. The results from that, uh, from then onwards in, in contributed uh, significantly towards winning the Premiership. They, they, they changed their approach to, to what they were focusing in on the game. Their training priorities fitted around that. It had an impact in terms of my work that the coaches started to put more emphasis on particular areas of the game and collected new data uh, from that as they evaluated the game. So it, it's very much part of their philosophy that uh, the coaches are the experts, they understand the game, the expectations of how the Saracens uh, team should play on the pitch. They're the only people who can evaluate the effectiveness of that. And what I've really come in is, is come into uh, an evidence-based approach and I've helped, if you like, uh, just oil that a bit more uh, by allowing them to look more systematically at patterns across games. I, uh, I think this is the way forward uh, for for any uh, any sport. It's not limited to rugby union. It's applicable to rugby league. It's applicable to football and any other of what I call the invasion sports, where you've got players who've got to work on a tactical coordination to be successful. And I, I personally think it's a way forward. It's a complement to the existing approaches where. We have a lot of data from Prozone, from Opta and others on what players do on the pitch. What the coaches bring is the ability to expertly evaluate the effectiveness of what they do on the pitch. And that's what Saracens, I think that's the leading edge for Saracens is their coaches evaluating the effectiveness. They create their own data that complements other activity data. And just a final word about the Sports Analytics Conference at Manchester Business School. You're excited to be part of that and excited what might come out of that forum. Yeah, because it's a learning process. You learn by looking at how others do things and look at other sports, look at other facets of life. So you can learn as much from you know looking at how Tesco do things because ultimately all of sport, all of business, all organisations are about in improving performance. My particular interest is how can the managers, how can the coaches use the evidence available analyse that to help improve performance and so I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to the sports analytics conference to, to help my learning process so that I can take that back and, and improve the, what, uh, what I do at Saracens.